things of that nature, 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 things of that nature. Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the pod of that nature. Curtis Wilkerson and Andrew Ellis join you from Natty State Studios in Fayetteville. Um, you got a basketball guy and a baseball guy. But we're, we're here to talk, talk football. football. Let's go. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> wow, man, they, they're really letting the inmates run the asylum here today. Uh, no, we had a, a really nice, lengthy scrimmage at Razorback Stadium. It was open to the public. So for those of you who uh, were maybe out there checking that out, Go ahead and hop in those comments, man. Let us know what you guys yeah. thought about the team today. Uh, we were out there. We took a lot of stats. Get over to uh, NightStateSports.com and check all those out. We've got passing, rushing, uh, defensive highlights. Field goal kicking was a struggle. Uh, got a little bit of everything there to check out, but we wanted to definitely hop on here and talk about it because it was the first time we've really been able to see these guys fully padded up, tack onto the ground, and, and going live. So here we are. We are here. Yes, it was very fun. A little, little bit colder than I thought it was going to be. I wore shorts out there. I did not realize it was going to be that windy. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it was like our first time really seeing them play football. Because in practice, we really only get to see spurts. And you see the uh, first-team offense for a few plays, and then they come out and, and not tackle to the ground. It's, it's You don't get a real glimpse of just this team playing football, uh, having to sustain a drive, see them put together a drive, see them in situations. Like It was just nice to see some of that stuff. Um, I don't know if we can overreact too much. I do also want to clarify for anybody that reads the story and reads the stats and is confused by whatever. They did a lot of weird stuff at the scrimmage, like, yes. for example, doing a whole period where they're in the red zone, and so we just decided to kind of separate it a little bit, like not count that one. They did a few other things that would be like, oh, third and seven, and the ball's at the 38 or whatever, and then they would gain five, and it'd be like, all right, now it's fourth and four, and you're like, wait, what a minute? It doesn't make any sense. You're, it would, they would do a lot of weird stuff like that. So it's kind of tough to keep up with, but we did the best we could. We are just, we were just, I mean, Scotty was out there with us, by the way. We, I guess we should mention, yeah. we are just three yes. normal men trying to accumulate stats. <laughs> Very unofficial, no replay, no anything. So uh, bear with us a little bit. And uh, of course, that's also why we wanted to do this so that any clarifications, any questions you have, we can get to any further analysis of what we saw. Yeah. I mean, I, I think <clears throat> maybe we just kind of start with our overall takeaways and I, the biggest thing maybe that stood out to me or, or what I walked away with was I think I saw maybe exactly what I needed to see, which was the the ones, the starting offense, just come down there and, and have a great drive, a touchdown drive to start that thing. Um, and then eventually the defense kind of really settled in. I thought maybe the defense won the day when it was all said and done. So you got, a, you got both ends of the spectrum there. Saw a little bit of what you wanted to see. Some hiccups, uh, too many penalties, things that you would expect. Uh, in a spring scrimmage, but uh, like the way the offense was moving the ball early with starters and like the way the defense kind of responded and uh, finally started making some plays because I think after the first two drives, we were kind of like, yeah, maybe this defense does stink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, I mean, they look pretty good today. Obviously, like in practice, it seems like the offense has the upper hand a little bit more mm -hmm. often. Like they were a little bit ahead of schedule. I mean, if you remember the first couple of days of practice, we thought the offense was way ahead. And so, you know, like you mentioned, those first two drives, they ran off back to back. I think it was like a seven play and then a nine play, something like that. Two touchdown drives back to back. And you're just like, man, they're about to just whip their ass all day. Like it's just about to be a. You know, they're about to just move down the field. And we were talking with our close personal friend, Josh Braun, on the way out. I told him, I was like, man, I thought y'all were about to just cruise on him for a second. And then he was like, oh, no, no, we knew we, we knew it wasn't going to be that easy. It is what it is. Uh, said all the right things. Uh, but, yeah, the defense did have a nice little bounce back there. And maybe my favorite moment of the scrimmage was uh, Lorando Snacks Johnson letting the offense know that they had a pretty good possession there on defense. He, he didn't mind chirping a little bit. Uh, anytime the defense makes a good play, you're going to hear about it from one of them, and it's most likely going to be Snacks or Jalen Braxton. Those are the two yeah. that really like to say it. But uh, a <laughs> few – I mean, also, we were. Th it took us until late in the scrimmage before we realized this. The second and third team offenses moved the ball here and there, but they didn't score a touchdown on their defenses. Right. Uh, and they, you know, there was some success here and there. Like, I think the mm -hmm. second team offense's first possession, they moved the ball all the way down to the 30 and then had the weird fumble. Um, kicking was a bit of an issue. That was another big takeaway that we had. Yeah, right they're going to have to work on that, man. But uh, I thought this <laughs> scrimmage, you know, we always talk about, joke about how it's like, it's tough to evaluate this because if anything good happens, 
it could also be bad depending on how you're looking at it. If you had a big play, you know, happen, your defense sucks <clears throat> or your offense is really good. If you had your defense dominate, uh, maybe your offense just sucks. So it's hard to really tell. I thought today had a nice mix of all of it where it wasn't like one group was substantially better than the other, one position group dominating one. So I thought it was a nice little well-rounded competition. Hashtag iron sharpens iron, Curtis. That's right. Yeah, it, it, as long as that iron keeps sharpening iron, uh, Razorback football is in good hands. That's exactly what you're looking for. Uh, before we talk about some individual players, we'll get into the quarterbacks maybe first, but uh, I want to talk about Bobby Petrino for a second because, <laughs> listen, he's been pretty pretty mild, mild-mannered man out there at practice. He was letting it eat at that scrimmage today and oh uh, he was I think he was looking for a little bit more sense of urgency early on uh, and then you know there, we talked about the penalties there were a lot of false starts and you know just some miscommunications things that you're going to see in March yeah. you know in in spring when you're installing a new offense but boy he was uh he had some moments there where he was fired up and he was laying into some dudes I mean there was there was plenty of times and it's it's weird because there weren't a ton of people they're probably 400 500 fans and media members and whoever in attendance so it's mm-hmm. like there's enough of a crowd to where you can't hear everything but it was quiet enough to where when someone would start yelling you could hear exactly what they were saying there was one point he he yelled during a touchdown what ended up being a 10 yard touchdown for Jaquin and Jackson because he broke a tackle in the backfield that was hilarious but uh yeah I remember Bobby just he just screams god it. <laughs> yeah. Mid play, like as the handoff was happening, and then Jaquinta Jackson breaks the tackle, ends up running around the left side for a touchdown. We got distracted. Was, we were like, "Well, we don't know what he was yelling about." But right, <laughs> he ends up like you know, you could just hear me every now and then talking to the quarterbacks, talking to the O line. I remember at one point he was yelling at the O line, and he was like, "We can't get beat by an underfront. Yeah. We can't get beat by an underfront. Third no, you're short. Moving. Yeah. yeah, third and short. What do you do? Yeah, it's like he just yelling stuff at him. And uh, there was one point, one of my favorite moments of the scrimmage, and. Bobby Petrino loves Taylor Green. He's spoken highly of him a lot. He obviously was part of him bringing him to Fayetteville, and there's no question he's a quarterback. He yelled at Taylor Green at one point because he was off doing something, and while KJ Jackson and the third team offense were running, yeah, and he yelled and he said, "Hey, come watch with the other quarterbacks. Come watch with the other quarterbacks." And I love that that he's like not afraid to yell at the yes. yell at his guy. Uh, it was just it was just good stuff. But Bobby Bobby P was fully engaged today. It yeah. was fun to watch. My favorite one was it was late in the scrimmage. I can't. I can't remember if it was when they were doing red zone. I think it was. And it was either Singleton or Jackson, but took a took a bad sack. He was like 10 or 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And I remember right as the play was ending, you could hear Petrina go, you're a quarterback, throw the football. <laughs> I'm just like, there we go. So. I tell you, KJ Jackson has so many moments where I'm like, ooh, man, this guy's so awesome. Yeah. But then every now and then he'll do something that people like you and I probably don't pick up on. Uh, but freaking Bobby Petrino will let him know when he does something stupid, when he doesn't <laughs> hand off when he was supposed to hand off, when he doesn't see the guy that do it, or he didn't move his guy over. Like the little things, every now and then Bobby will just rip them. But uh, I thought KJ Jackson, for the most part, had a pretty good scrimmage. And uh, I mean, honestly, we just talked about the quarterbacks for a little bit. Yeah. Malachi Singleton continues to do what he's done in practice a lot, which is he gets the ball out quick. He's not going to blow you away. He's not going to make a ton of throws that you're like, oh, wow. How yeah. do you make that throw? He's not fitting them into tight windows, but he just knows where to go with the football. He keeps the He's ball very out of efficient. trouble, man. Yeah. Doesn't put the ball in harm's way at all. Very <clears> efficient. <throat> Honestly, Malachi Singleton might be like your perfect backup quarterback. Yeah. Because a mean, guy who can just come in and run the offense and kind of know where to go with it. Uh, there were a lot of times I thought he and Taylor Green both blitz pick up things, just getting the ball out where mm-hmm. rush is coming from here. Oh, we're throwing right into it over here. I mean, one of the first big plays of the scrimmage was Isaiah T- Satania for like 20 something yards. And it was just a simple drag across the field, but he threw right into pressure. I thought that was really good. Uh, it just, it felt like when green or Singleton were operating the offense that it just had a lot more flow and just, it was a lot more yeah, efficient rhythm. and there was just a little bit more uncertainty and, thinking and things are a little bit slowed down when it was when it was Criswell and Jackson yeah today. absolutely and I mean <clears throat> I, I just never thought I would be saying this especially going into the spring I think that Jacoby Criswell might be the fourth best quarterback on this team I mean I don't even say that as like <laughs> in, 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 he didn't have like a bad day or anything it wasn't like no. I mean he, he, he completed some passes like none of the guys I would say none of the four quarterbacks like blew us away today yeah uh, just kind of the way it played out it wasn't a super offensive scrimmage uh, and he didn't make any huge mistakes but I just think KJ Jackson's a really talented guy. 
I think he might end up being the med, the most talented out of all these guys. When he's going to be you, the, especially the once they start the future, running, yeah. he's the guy of the future for sure. I mean, he feels like that. Feels like like the franchise is him. Uh, and I mean, Jacoby Cruz is not bad, but he hasn't really won that backup job. I think Malachi Singleton has emerged as the second team quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, he, I he has so the majority. Yeah. He got the first reps with the second group, mm-hmm. which has been happening in practice. But every now and then, it was kind of tough to tell. Like, when they go to 7-on-7, seven seven, sometimes Jacoby would line up second. And so Splitting we didn't really reps, know yeah. if him lining up with the twos a lot was real. He got the the first reps of the twos, and I would say more reps. I haven't gone back and really looked at it. But uh, he definitely got more reps out there, and a lot of that was because he sustained drives. I mean, right. there, were, there were multiple times Singleton was out there, and it was eight, nine, ten play drives. Uh, man, he, he 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 was it was it was really fun to just watch a few of these things develop. But Singleton Singleton's kind of interesting. I I, I I didn't I don't know if I really gave him a fair chance to win the job, especially whenever you're talking about with Taylor Green. But it seems like he's been as consistent as pretty much any of these quarterbacks. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, just just looking at the stats, and again, you can find all this over at our at our website, NattyStateSports.com. But uh, yeah, it was it was a roller coaster ride for Taylor Green. Like he started out so hot, had a touchdown pass on the first yeah. drive. Uh, but he he finishes the day ten to twenty one. There was a point where he was four for eleven. Yeah, exactly. And then he heated up again. So yeah, ten to twenty one, one hundred and fifty three yards, uh, two touchdowns. But then the day ended with Hudson Clark picking him off. So yeah. But hey, listen, he doesn't he doesn't know about Hud Island injury. yet. You, yeah. If you haven't learned about Hud Island, like you you've got to experience it in that way. We, he won't this, make that mistake again. We've seen again. talented quarterbacks throw picks to Hudson Clark and Donald W. Reynolds <laughs> yeah. Razorback Stadium before. That's, so, I that's mean, it exactly just is right, is. man. Uh, but to speak to what you were saying. I mean, Malachi Singleton. Efficient, 9 of 13, 91 yards. Great. Uh, Criswell, 8 of 14, 60 yards. Okay, fine. K.J. Jackson, 7 of 9, 58 yeah. yards. So, K.J. Jackson's more accurate than than I thought he was, and I feel like he's maybe gotten better since then. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he, he's, he's more accurate. I mean, he he lets that ball rip every yeah. now and then. He had one that was kind of across the field. It was only like an 11 or 12-yard gain, but it was on a third and like seven, and he's on the left hash – throwing all the way to the right sideline. I forgot. I think it was Cameron Bibby made the catch. Bob, that's another thing I should mention, the receivers these guys were throwing to. True. So, obviously, K.J. Jackson, the fact that he's 7 for 9 or what is that what it was, 7 for 9? Yeah. You know, you're throwing to Cameron Bibby and you're throwing to these third-team receivers. There was some guy, Luke Buchanan. Yeah. I mean, you know. I don't. I didn't. I don't know who that young man is, and we've yeah. been watching and his football to, team a lot. Not to throw shade, but no, like, but like, Jasmine like, James had like a half dozen drops today. He did. Oh, and that's Davion not really an Dozier. Uh, so. Davion Dozier. It was a rough day at the office for the yeah. sophomore or the second year wide receivers. Uh, but I should also mention with Taylor mm-hmm. Green did not have his top target in Andrew Armstrong, who got banged up at Thursday's practice. Then we thought like that might be a bigger deal. Really wasn't. Uh, it really wasn't as big of a deal as it seems because he was out there not participating. Yeah. But he was doing some conditioning off to the side. Yeah. Seems like he's he going to be fine. Yeah. He was running laps. I think he might have even done some of the. Uh, like the pre scrimmage, you know, like yeah. indie drills and stuff a little bit. So yeah. It was it was good to see him out there and not, you know, in street clothes, not with a bunch of stuff on his knee or anything. Like he seemed like yeah. whatever it was, like yeah, he's he just on had his a way sleeve, back. Like it, almost like a compression <laughs> sleeve kind of deal on. But uh, no surprise precautionary. They don't yeah. they, they hold him out. Uh I feel like and then, you know, Bryce Stevens, another yeah. top target out. Jaden uh, Wilson. <laughs> Jaden Wilson was also out. Yeah, yeah. that was kind of I don't know if I knew about that. Like he got he uh I can't remember what it was, but he came up a little bit lame late in the practice. I can't remember if it was Tuesday or Thursday. It must have been Thursday. So didn't seem like a big yeah. surprise there, but he was moving around. Okay. Uh, I see a question pop up from Eureka Strings. Not only is – is well, also I should mention, he says, is Has running or is he still nursing the sprain? Uh, well, Dylan Has did not participate in the scrimmage because he's been banged up. Yeah. Luke List? Has, though. Uh, I forget what for doing. I think it was a wrist. I could be I think, wrong. yeah, it was something. It definitely wasn't a leg or anything. Yeah. Uh, but Luke Has, who did – uh, pick, shout out to, I'm not going to say their names. Someone posted a video of Luke has getting injured a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Uh, wild move. Um, <laughs> turns out it wasn't that bad of an injury. He's been back at practice. He brought, he was at both practices this week. Caught a touchdown on the opening drive, a 24-yard little wheel route beautiful. from Dalen Green. It was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, made another right, really tough contested catch later in the scrimmage. Luke has is very good at football. Uh, yes. Yeah, he, he, he was, he's out there. He's running fine. Um, yeah, he looks good. But, yeah, Taylor Green missing two of his top targets. Um, but I thought for the most part, you know, th- things were fine. Tyron Broden had a drop, but he also had a nice deep ball. Ooh, that, um, he, uh, he he mossed, mossed that guy, on Jalen Braxton. Said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy, that was uh, that was a hell of a catch. Jalen Braxton also had a really good screen. He had two pass breakups. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a nice you know nice day for the most part. You hear him a lot. Did get called for pi one time. 
decided to yell at the ref and say, let us play. Let us play. <laughs> let us play, ref. <laughs> I love that. And it was, it was also the most obvious P.I. of all time. But, yeah. but, but no B, no DB has ever just willingly accepted a P.I. Of course. you got to put up a, uh, an argument there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah no doubt about it. Um, I thought the uh, yeah receiver wise outside of you know Broden's great catch Isaiah Satania had another really good day. I mean uh, they maybe maybe the star of the scrimmage. I mean yeah. something about spring scrimmages Isaiah Satania he owns them. He he absolutely does. But yeah he had so the touchdown and he, was, he caught he was from also Criswell. Like, Go ahead. Well I was just gonna say um, they've been getting him the ball in space and then he's really like I'm concerned about. The integrity of knees in the linebacker room, in particular, because he catches that ball underneath, and it's just like uh, stop and go. And he's he was left he left a couple guys in was tough it Carson spots. Carson Dean, he crossed yes. up today. Yeah, he yes, crossed it was. up. Carson Dean, who ran with the first team defense at linebacker, by the way, he did. Yeah, we're just kind of throwing little tidbits at y'all. Uh, but it, yeah, again, I see some questions rolling in. If y'all have mm-hmm. questions, we are more than happy to answer them. For sure. Because uh, yeah, there was a lot you. that went on. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be something that we miss or forget about. But uh, get us those questions if, you have, if you're wondering about anybody in particular. Uh, but yeah, Isaiah Satania, the cool thing about him is he's obviously got that deep threat that you can take the top off the defense. He caught a deep ball from Taylor Green, 33-yard touchdown today. Uh, really good. But like you mentioned, it's not just home run or bust they get the ball to him at the line of scrimmage he makes guys miss we mentioned the blitz pickup that they they found mm-hmm. him on there and he's able to make stuff after the play uh isaiah satania it, it, you know i think he's established himself at this point as a big time playmaker for this offense and yeah really for the first team offense in particular i'll just look at them you know not not a big picture take on the whole team but that first group they have some explosiveness factor where you see some inconsistencies, you see every now and then Taylor Green might miss a few throws, but they feel like they have that quick strike ability at any point, mm-hmm. which just we did not feel about this team last year. I mean, Andrew Armstrong was a good player, but it was never one of those, oh, they're at midfield, they could score from here. Oh, wow, they, there might be a big thing happen. Uh, I thought they ran the ball pretty efficiently, and I felt they, they made those deep ball passes, which kind of just put you in a tough spot as a defense. Uh, yeah. I, I was for the most part. I think I was encouraged by what we saw from the the first team offense. I think so too. Yeah, uh, just thinking like about it wasn't a, a perfect other guys. day, but it was like nah. big picture. It's like I see I see the vision here. Right. Uh, quiet day from Tesla. I think he might have just had one grab. Barkey's uh, yeah. gums. Man, he continues to look good in spring, yeah. and uh, I know he drew some some nice uh, praise from Sam Pittman the other day about we got North Texas Barkey's gums on the on the track. Yeah, now. and I've been seeing him make a lot of plays uh, throughout the spring and in, in seven on seven and different things. But yeah, he's, he was pretty good today again. Had several grabs, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you got Luke has you're you're going to have Ty Washington, so you know reps are going to be tough. But he he definitely looks like an improved version of himself, so that's good to see. Um, I thought the backs looked pretty good today. Yeah. Now there was a period of time. And that might have been more twos and threes where the defensive line was just swallowing the O-line, mm-hmm. and, uh, and those guys weren't getting anything. But I thought uh, Rashad DeBinion looked pretty good today out there. Uh, Jaquin and Jackson, like I just – I would just have no interest in trying to tackle that man. <laughs> it's a big boy. And talked about it after <laughs> Tuesday when they, they were not you know live, live action, live tackle or whatever – and uh, Hudson Clark tried to meet him in the hole, and I was like, dude, he better be glad that that wasn't a, a thing. Um, well, who was it that tried to meet him in the hole today and just got... Jaden Johnson? That's or no. right. Yeah, Jaden yeah, Johnson. And he who, finished the tackle, but he yeah. got flattened in the process. I thought he was about to have to enter concussion protocol, man. Seriously, he was, he, he, yeah. was, he was dazed a little bit when he got up. But uh, yeah, you know, and what's interesting is there was a lot of decent running. Like, if you look at the stats, you would think, like, oh, the running backs just got six, seven yards of pop. It wasn't like there were these massive holes where they were just moving the defensive line back. Right. There were a lot of times, like <laughs> we mentioned the touchdown where Jacoon and Jackson had to make a guy miss. There were a lot of times where it was not the first guy who was taking them down. They were moving the pile a little bit, fighting for those extra yards. I thought Rashad Dubinion had a really solid day solid. from that regard. Just mm-hmm. kind of finding the hole, getting there, getting his, moving forward a little bit. I mean, the longest run was probably Russell's. That was like 20, Russell had a big run. Augustov, Augustov, who weirdly, he had four carries for 19 yards, and he had a 22-yard carry. So do the math oh, on that yeah. one. Yeah, uh, there you go. yeah he, had a, he had a nice little carry where he kind of – but again, it wasn't like a big hole. He had to kind of misdirection and end up going to the other side mm-hmm. of the field. Um, I thought the running backs really – all four of them, or the top guys, really looked good. Yeah, red zone tutty for uh, Dom Johnson. Dom Johnson, who also yeah. – he really looked good. And he was running with mostly the threes, which like – Running backs, I'm not like I think all these guys are pretty interchangeable for the most part. Though I will say, Rashad Dubinian and Jaquin and Jackson are the top two, and I think they've kind of separated at this yes. point. Yeah, I those agree. are the that's the one-two punch, and then mm. Augustov can help you. 
Dom Johnson can help you. And I think Dom, Braylon, who looks like he's in good shape. I think now. Braylon Russell yeah. can help you. And yeah, Dominic Johnson does look mm-hmm. like he's kind of trimming up a little bit. He really looks looks more and more like his Braylon old Russell's self a little the biggest bit. back. Braylon Russell is a massive back, dude. Yeah, he would be the biggest huge. back on any team, dude. He's two. He's like a legit two sixty. It's <laughs> he's crazy. A, he's a big fella. Uh, man. But like you said, he had one of the bigger runs of the day. So it's like it's not mm-hmm. like he's not fast. Um, yeah, I thought it was an encouraging day for the run game for the most part. Yeah, and uh, you know we'll see what that means for the defense. The defensive line also rotated like crazy. Yes. It was so hard to keep up. But there was a one point where I saw Landon Jackson in there with the twos. Right. And I was like, I don't know what we're doing here. I saw Quincy Rhodes in there with the ones, and I'm just like, we're just moving guys around. So it was a little bit tough to keep up with all of it. Yeah, but uh, and I know uh, like <laughs> Hudson Clark got the pick, and so that's a big play there. But are we in agreement that Anton Junkaj is the the defensive player of the day? I, I would mean, say it was the most notable performance for sure. Yeah, uh, he was living in the backfield for sure. Well, um, again, it's tough because it's like, what's a sack in these settings? Because if they touch right. the quarterback, he's down. I think Cam Ball had a sack, but it's yeah. like we couldn't tell. There was one point where it was like, I think Nico Davier may have forced a fumble, but we weren't really sure if it was him or who recovered it, right. what was going on. But there was a little bit, but Junkaj was in the backfield a lot. Yeah, and he had a couple where, TFLs on the backs too. and Yeah, yeah, you can score it however you want to score it, whether it's a gain of one, loss of one, TFL, sack. Junkaj was in the backfield, and we were saying his name a lot. Yeah, uh, and he, it hasn't was been really the case all spring. And, so. you know, it's funny. The other day, Cam Ball mm. said he was, he was like, hey, he's taking a little while to learn how to defend the run. You know, he had 17 sacks in his previous school, so you know you can rush the passer, but can he defend the run? And a couple of the times he was in the backfield were against the run, which is encouraging to see. Uh, if they could really get him going, it would make you feel a little bit differently about this D-line if you add another bona fide, contributing, solid piece in that yeah. two deep there. That would make you feel pretty good. That was nice. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely uh, definitely agree with that. Um, just while it's on my mind, I know we're kind of going all over the place yeah, here. Yeah, we're just bouncing around. Um, <laughs> punting today I thought was fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Field goal kicking, not so good. Not good at all. Um, I only recall one make. I remember each guy. I said, so Vito made a 31, and then the other, uh, I forget the guy's name, Matthew something. Matthew oh, yeah, Shipley. once they got down into uh, the red zone and couldn't but score. It was yeah. Shipley who made it, and and the, which prompted Snacks to say, we made one! Yes. Which was, the reason he said it is because they had missed like four. For like an hour and a half, nothing had been made. <laughs> and it was also, so. again, the, the field goal kicking was very <laughs> weird because there would be... Like, for instance, the second-team offense had a fumble at the 30-yard line Mm -hmm. that the defense recovered, and then they were like, field goal, field goal, field goal. And you're like, wait, what? They would kick field goals at just bizarre times, and they would punt at bizarre times, which just kind of – it wasn't like a true scrimmage from that regard where it was like first, second, third down, you don't get a first down, now you punt. It was very just – the special teams was just mixed in there. Yeah. And so it's kind of tough to keep up with where they're kicking from, who's the, kicking. They've got some leg, you know. Like a, Vito it, has a really strong. That was leg. Vito at the very mm-hmm. end, right? I mean, it was a it was a fifty four yard attempt, and he sent it into the stands. Into the seats, but yeah. it was just like a section over from where he needed it to be. So yeah, he needed to make it in section three hundred one, and he hit it in section three hundred three. Like, yeah, it just it, was a exactly tough one. right. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, they do have a strong leg. But that that <laughs> battle is probably going to play out. For a while, I don't. I don't. I, think I don't so see too. any separation. I know. I'm not gonna like act like we've been sitting here charting the the kicks all all spring. But from what I've seen, which isn't a huge sample size, neither of those guys are super consistent. Uh, I I hope I'm saying the dude's name. I think it's Matthew Shipley, is the dude the, the transfer from Hawaii. He's mm-hmm. got experience kicking. I mean, Vito kicked a little bit at Wisconsin with mixed results. Uh, so you imagine one of those guys. I mean, Vito probably has the stronger leg. I think the other guy may be a little bit more accurate. We'll just see who emerges. But today was a rough look from that respect. And, I mean, you just know that whoever it is is going to be worse than Cam Little. I hate to say it, but when you are when you had a guy that was so consistent where for three years you didn't yeah. have to think about it, anytime you crossed the 50, you were in field goal range. Just not that same dynamic. But, hey, might, uh, might force this team to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Might force them maybe fourth and three they want to go for a little bit. We'll see. Sam Pittman, he's he's thrown out the analytics though, so I don't know. They might they might be kick happy this year. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who was it? What did what did Pittman say? I think Gums made a catch, and so <laughs> and so Pittman was trying to you know give his guy some love, but he I don't think he saw who made the actual catch. So he was over there talking to C J Brown. He's like, you make that play. He's like, nah. C J Ma- Brown made a few plays. I believe he had he three did. receptions, and like thirty yeah. some yards. Uh, he looks <laughs> good. Uh, but yeah, that was so funny. As CJ, you, I, you could, we couldn't hear what he was saying, but I would assume he was like, "Yeah, no, it was not me, coach." Yeah, but, it wasn't uh, me. Right. Sorry, <laughs> Sam yeah. Pittman. Man. Sam, that was another funny part about the scrimmage is every now and then Sam Pittman would just start shouting a yard line in a down and distance where he would just be like, mm-hmm. "Oh, let's go, 
38 yard line, third and five, or whatever. Like, yeah. you just start throwing out situations for them to do, which is cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, you like to see that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was nothing like groundbreaking from this scrimmage. No. Just like a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of things happening. We it was like I mean it was probably a hundred plays. It was a nice little sample size um, of of stuff for us to identify and watch there. For but sure. I don't know offensive line. Did you did you have any like big takeaways from there? It was it, I, there was no there definitely weren't a ton of sacks. Maybe two or three total. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought the first the first unit looked good. Um, and, and it's about what you'd expect. Like the the further down you got on the uh, on the depth chart, the the worse it looked. Um, but I will say, I don't know. Maybe they were just like fatigued because it was a. I mean, hell, we were out there for a long time. But once yeah. they got into uh, Braun the red was zone, exhausted. He was yeah, saying oh, that yeah, he was like he was, he was like really they ran sixteen straight plays at one point. And he was like, I yeah. was gassed. Once we got into red zone, low red zone, um, they were just getting swallowed. Yeah, um, at the line, and true. so some struggles there. But yeah, not a lot of sacks. I mean, the protection for the most part was good, but they just couldn't they couldn't get any holes for the backs there late. Um, but for the most part, when they were just going up and down for full drives, I yeah, I think that might be the most disappointing <clears throat> part of the scrimmage is how bad the offenses were in the red zone. I yeah, mean, we mentioned Don One Johnson touchdown. had a touchdown. I don't think I think that was it. And I now think they so didn't too. they didn't run a ton of plays. It was probably like twenty five plays total from the red zone. Yeah, I think they did ones ones twos <clears throat> and threes got a um from the eighteen drive, yeah. and then they moved it down to the eight and did it again. And yeah, yeah, was, and the defense was just dominating those periods. Yeah, they were really good. Um, other things with the offensive line, uh, four false starts. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really I not believe that bad. most of those. I don't I don't know if any of those were with the first team. I don't. Yeah, I don't recall. I think most of the like weird penalties were yeah, with the second and third. There was team. only one hold that we saw. Um, one ineligible man downfield. I don't know who. Yeah, it was. which wiped out a nice Isaiah Satania play. It did. Yeah, it did. So you know, I mean, it was. I, I thought they were. I thought they were just fine. Yeah. Nothing like crazy to take away from that necessarily, but wasn't uh, a lot of of huge but we'll explosive take plays. That. We'll but. take a day where the offensive line you don't you don't really have a big takeaway. Yeah, you know what I mean because they were just kind of they were just kind of there. Um, For sure, Quincy Rhodes is another dude that I feel like we should mention. I mentioned that he got first team reps on the defensive line. He had the fumble recovery early in the scrimmage. He also broke up a pass on third down. It was like third and four, and they were trying to do a quick. It was Criswell was trying to throw a quick screen to I believe C.J. Brown. And Quincy Rhodes was kind of on the edge there and then timed it perfectly and jumped up and knocked it down. Yeah. I thought that was good to see. Uh, Kiwi Rose, had a, he was in the backfield a good bit. I thought yeah, the defensive nice line, day. for the most part, won the battle against the offensive line, but it wasn't drastic enough to where I'm, like, concerned. But I sure. thought there was a, like, the defensive line took a nice little step forward today. There was a few guys that are in that, like, four to eight category of, like, do we really – trust these guys like you feel good about the top four do you really trust these guys like the kiwi Rhodes and quincy Rhodes? uh those guys stepped up today and june Kaj, we mentioned him i think that was really encouraging but on the flip side of it in the red zone offense got to do more man yeah yep got to finish got to finish drives get some tutties or uh or petrino is going to have your head <laughs> i love some of these comments Matty Ice, Petrino seemed calmer. Nope. <laughs> no, yeah. He he, <laughs> he's, he tries to be on his best behavior when he knows everybody's – and I think also he knew people were going to be, like, looking at him, waiting on him to, like, go crazy. So yeah. uh, just is what it is. But, no, yeah, he's not he's not that calm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Kingsley said that uh, the football team account dropped the Mossing video right as we started talking about it, which is good because now there's some context there. There you uh, go. Hell of a catch, and man, yeah, Broden has had such a good spring. He's a player, man. He's gonna he's gonna make yeah. plenty of plays, and that's kind of what I like. The thing that I think about with this offense is like, look, Isaiah Satania, what do you have? Four receptions today. There mm. might be games where he only has two or three, and there might be games where Tyrone Broden has two or three. But you just feel like that threat is always there, where they can always moss someone, they can always get behind the defense, right? Uh, and that's without Andrew Armstrong there to kind of benefit from all that because i mean th- those guys being good is just going to make it easier for andrew armstrong uh i would really love to see what this offense looks like when it's really clicking on full cylinders yeah yeah i'm uh i'm with you on that one for sure and that's the thing you know we've got what one more saturday um scrimmage kind of like yeah. we had here and then the spring game i don't know what it's going to look like for armstrong i, I have no idea i'm sure they're going to be cautious with him or whatever but it doesn't seem like it's that serious so maybe we get to see them uh you know kind of operating at full strength with some of those guys too and that would be uh that would be pretty ideal um i see eureka strings here says i'd I'd love for dom to finally have another good year i would too and he's gonna get his opportunities because yeah 
Pittman loves him. And, and if he keeps working himself into shape, I mean, he looks, I thought he looked uh, better than he has in, in a couple years, honestly. Uh, I've seen him out there today just in terms of, of, I don't know why the word shape keeps coming to my mind, but I can't get past it. But he's not as round as he used to be, okay? Uh, but <laughs> Literal no, he looks, shape. He looks square, pretty good out circle, there. circle, triangle, I mean, all this. You think about him as like the guy you give the ball to down on the goal line, but I just keep thinking about like your dude is is probably Jaquindon Jackson, yeah, and you hand it to dude. him there. Not and, a small uh, fella. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll see what kind of uh, what kind of stuff we got going from him. Uh, Clint says he's asking about Taylor's accuracy overall. Ten of twenty one. Um, uh, it was. It looked like a guy who completes about fifty nine percent of his passes on yeah, his career. Yeah, like, and some of them, it, it it was kind of a mixed bag. Like there were a couple drops, uh, and then there were a couple just. Not good throws. He's re- he yeah. really doesn't. He's not good at throwing a running backs for whatever reason. It's the most bizarre thing ever. When yeah, there's like a yeah, running back true. out of the backfield, something about that throw like kind of just horizontal and not vertical. He doesn't make it. He missed two of those big today. There was one that was, I believe, to Jaquinta Jackson. It was like wide open out of the backfield. He missed him. And there was one where Rashad Dubinion was open and he threw it and Dubinion caught it, but he caught he he let him out of bounds a little bit. So there's like a couple just like gimmies that he'll miss, and it seems like. Pretty much every day we watch him throw, there's like two or three of those that he'll just miss, and it's just going to happen. But it also will fit some in tight windows. Like the one he fit to has, when he was four for 11, we were like kind of like wondering, we're like, man, is this dude ever going to figure it out? It was like <laughs> yeah. third and nine, and then he just drops back and throws a dart to has in between two dudes. And I'm like, oh, all right. So it's like it seems like when he really needs to, his accuracy is fine. But I don't know. It's something about like the touch of it, of some of those those easier throws he just struggles with. And uh, his downfield accuracy has been better than I expected because I yeah. think that was one of the question marks for him was could he really be accurate down the field? It seems like intermediate he's really good. His accuracy in the sh- in the short, just kind of in between stuff, is where he struggles a little bit. But uh, mm-hmm. downfield, I mean, he's made. I mean, the one he threw to Has is beautiful. The one he threw to Satania was beautiful, uh, and even the one with Broden, he kind of just gave him a chance. But I, th- I thought he's done a really good job of of finding those dudes downfield. But yeah, there's just random misses that happen here and there. But I mean, that's that's kind of how it is with any quarterback, but. He's not a uh, not a pinpoint sniper, I wouldn't say. Right, and then you also have to remember, not you because you know this, but people who are listening, uh, he's going to be able to make some plays with his legs, also, and that's going to be a big part that's of his game. A, that's, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because yeah. there was like at least three plays where he's rolled out to his right, and in real life, he would just run for eight yards and dive yes. forward. But he knows if I even if anyone touches me, I'm down. So he would kind of just throw one up for grabs, and there were a couple drops here and there. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Kingsley's asking about our man Gum. See, the only tight end being used as the receiver um, in well, 12 personnel. I'll tell you who they're not using as a receiver in 12 personnel is Andreas Posk. They're yes. not using him as a receiver. I, I, that's funny because I was going to say you could really tell exactly what was about to happen because it was almost like those guys were splitting reps. Yeah. And uh, Gums would go in, he'd get targeted, he'd come back out, and Posk would uh, block. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know if I saw, saw Posca run at all. I don't um, know either. I will say one of the the first play the offense ran had Luke has split out in like the slot at receiver. Yeah. Uh, so they would do stuff like that, and I'm sure that'll be a thing where they have Post in on in line, and then had whoever it is at tight end Gums has maybe mm-hmm. both of them split out wide or kind of in the backfield as like H back type of thing. I think they're going to be able to get creative with how they use those guys. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I looked up I looked up at one point and. Um, Has was in there, and Tesla was in the slot, and Satania was split out wide. And I was like, "Man, they're just you know what I mean." So it's uh, it's it's. I guess we should also mention, by the way, Tyrus Washington has not participated. He did not participate in the scrimmage, and I haven't seen him in a ton of like live full contact. But he's working his way back at practice. He was in that Mm -hmm. group with Jaden Wilson and Andrew Armstrong and them. That's another dude who had a really promising stretch there last year, especially once Has went down. Yeah, you add him to the mix, it really you can you can the options are Im- limitless with personnel wise and formatting, like how they're going to line up with this offense and where they can make some of these guys. I mean, him and Has together, him and Gums together, it all kind of works for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think the uh, somebody was asking us. It was right after you left, and we were at Twin Peaks the other day. And uh, we had someone call in, was asking for us to, like, kind of grade some of the position groups. He had three in particular, yeah. but um, one of them was the offensive line. And I think we we kind of all agreed, like, probably a solid B. Like, they've just been they've yeah. been good. Um, and I, I think that that changes a lot of things for this team because last year, I don't know that we'll really 
have a good understanding of, of what they could have done with KJ and, and the guys yeah. at the skill positions because you can block for them. So that all matters. It makes it but, harder to evaluate every position. Yeah. In the offense. And so I think they I think they have a competent at minimum offensive line this year. And so maybe we can see what uh what the toys are capable of doing. And I feel comfortable with where this offense is at and, and maybe what their potential is for the season. Um, I feel better about that than I do the defense, but honestly, um, I feel a little bit better about the defense after today than I did, you know, at, at other points throughout the course of the spring here. We just said it a million times, like they they got to go get some, they got to go get a couple linebackers, man. They just have to. They Another do. interior defensive lineman, but they got to go get a couple linebackers. Speaking of linebackers, shout out to Alex Sanford who got hurt, and we were like, "Oh, that looks like a bad one." Like, yeah, he was they like were helping him off the field. He was like really struggling to put weight on it, mm-hmm. and then like four plays later, there was a sack, and we were like, "Who was that?" Oh, number twenty. Oh, that's Alex Sanford. He made a yeah. sack. All right, good. <laughs> so he's good fine. for him. Guess he's guess he's fine. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, that's a good point on the offensive line. And I'll tell you this: mm-hmm. whether they're like actually going to be this like Joe Moore winning group or not, or maybe they're going to be as bad. The team feels better about their offensive line now than they do last year than they did at this point last year I mean felt like in the spring there was a different group every time it took them a couple weeks in spring before they even realized that they needed to move Patrick Kudis to right tackle which now that Patrick Kudis is at left guard you feel better about what he can give you they had to move Patrick Kudis to right tackle in the middle of spring because they realized they didn't have anyone that could play right tackle yeah Uh, left tackle Carmona just brings a lot of stability that they just haven't had there in a little bit like since I mean I guess like Myron Cunningham like I don't think they just haven't had a ton of stability there at that position where you're kind of always wondering what's going to happen mm-hmm. uh i feel like that's a big piece for them i mean who well, who's the guy who was the it was luke brown no not luke brown luke jones he started left yeah. tackle that yep. one year you just think back like they haven't had like a proven guy at that position in a minute uh, i think carmono brings that uh, addison nichols i don't you know i don't have a ton of like takeaways on his game or anything but i think he brings a little bit of stability just being an older guy who's been around and the, the team seems to feel pretty good about him there hasn't been any controversy i know people were really concerned because the first video we put out this spring there was a couple weird snaps yeah because it was raining and everybody freaked out about the snaps i haven't noticed that being, being an issue at no all. i i remember um i remember one high snap that kj jackson had to go get today and if it was kj jackson that means it was not yeah addison nichols <laughs> yeah or wiggins or, like i, I don't yeah. even know who the third team center is at I this think point Brooks so. edmondson maybe, maybe so yeah <laughs> and uh so that's yeah. I mean, I think that's a that's a pretty good sign here. I just, and look, now depth is always the, the biggest thing I think about with this team is like when the first team defense lines up, and I'm just looking at those eleven guys. I'm like, that's a pretty good, you know, like I feel good about those guys. I mean, linebacker excluded from this because I don't mm-hmm. I, I don't have a ton of faith in Carson Dean at this point because he has not played in the SEC at all. Uh, Sorry's played a little bit, but it's like it's a little. That's your question mark. But I feel like that at first eleven, I'm like, all right, that's fine. You look at the first team offense, and you're like, pretty good there. Depth is a very big concern for this team, and if you mm. watch the second and third teams, it just looked a little disjointed. Uh, no matter who was quarterback and no matter what the situation was, both sides of the ball, it's just a little bit different. Uh, but that first group, when we're talking about the offensive line, I don't know how many guys they feel great about, but I know that first five and probably even six, seven, eight. I mean, Tykees Crawford's a guy they talk about a lot. Um, he mixed in with the ones a little bit. I think they feel good about that initial group. After that... Yeah. All bets are off. I can't. I cannot. You know, if there's two injuries, yeah. I might feel very different. Sure. But at least right now in this spring, they feel night and day compared to what they did last year on the offensive line. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, in the Papa J Rod says is the is the talent there at linebacker or is it just an experience issue? Um, there is some talent there. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If there's enough. Like I think Brad Spence could be a, a really good SEC linebacker, um, and he showed flashes. So, yeah, uh, Xavier Sori, like. If he was good enough to be recruited and, and be on right. Georgia's football team, then you know he's a, a talented football player. Just haven't seen enough. And he has not stood out to me in the spring at all. Yeah. And there's really not a lot of opportunities for the linebackers too because they're not hitting and tackling a lot. Uh, but you had that today, and like I don't I don't remember him doing anything bad. I don't remember him doing anything good. Like I, I just think he was kind of out there. Um, fair and enough. so, like, yeah, I mean, they got some guys out there. But, yeah, I mean. The depth is really like – they have some talent. Yeah, like Brad Spence is talented. Yeah. Sori is talented. Sanford's talented. Yeah. Sanford's like, talented. Mm-hmm. But that's like four guys that we just listed. Yeah. And then after that, it drops off a cliff. I mean, you're talking about your Caden Hilly and Brooks both and all that stuff. Like, uh, it's just, it's just, there's not a ton of depth. There's not a ton of experience. And it's tough to evaluate the position because 
you don't really know what to expect from any of these dudes. Right. And uh, I feel I mean, like it's okay to have some guys like that, you know, in your rotation. That's yeah, okay, but 100%. you gotta have a sure thing. And that's yeah. where I what I don't think they have. Like Spence could be great, Sorry could be great this year, but wouldn't it be nice if you had somebody that you just knew right. was gonna get you, you know, eighty five tackles or whatever. Like you just I really knew wish what you're this gonna team get had Jaheim Thomas or Chris Paul on it. Yes. If yeah, this team exactly. had Jaheim Thomas <laughs> yeah. or Chris Paul, I'd feel night and day different about the defense, honestly. For sure. Just because yeah. you would and another thing is I, I was thinking I was talking about this with John the other day. They're gonna put the mics in the helmets for mm-hmm. the season. Like they're gonna pass this new rule where the quarterbacks will get to have the mic and communicate on the sideline and the defense will get one player. Who is that player even gonna be for Arkansas? Because typically it would be your linebacker. You know, like it's gonna be whoever your oldest guy is, kind of in the middle of the defense. Yeah, is Xavier Sawyer, are they putting a the mic in his ear? Is he I mean, are you gonna do it in Landon Jackson? So you're gonna have to turn around as he's got his hand in the dirt and be like, Hey, here's the call, guys, or maybe you just is Hudson Clark Hudson maybe the way Clark. I think that's the way Hudson you gotta do it. Clark. Uh, you know, who knows? But I think that it says a lot about this team that there's not even a linebacker that we know for sure is a leader on this team. Mm. Uh, and I mean it's not a huge deal. And there's a lot of time between the season, but yeah, it's it's definitely a huge all of the above concern. Yeah. They'll address it somehow. You know, like you just you have no idea yeah. who, like what's gonna come available in the portal. And that starts, I guess, in a couple weeks, two or three weeks, that that next window, and it's gonna be important for them. And so they could uh they could definitely help their case by getting another guy or two in there. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? King says we have to keep Car- Junior Carmona healthy, man. Yeah, I mean that's a dude. That's a guy that like the more y'all talk to him, and I say y'all, like the more fans hear from him, the more yeah. they see his personality. Y'all are going to love that dude. He reminds me a lot of Sebastian Tritola from a personality standpoint because Tritola mm-hmm. was you know, and this is before transfers were even cool. I remember Tritola like the day he got on campus, it was clear. It's like this dude's a starter. This dude is a vocal guy. He's a leader. Like he was a big part of the team from the day he arrived on campus. And it's kind of felt that way with Fernando Carmona and uh, definitely feel a lot better about him than you have felt at that position for a while. For sure. Uh, a few more comments to get to here. we got a couple from Braylon on the wide receiver. He says, do you think CJ Brown could run with the ones? So I'm going to say no, but only because Isaiah Satania is going to be running that slot position. And yeah. I feel very good about Isaiah Satania. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like in a nutshell, yes, I think CJ Brown, they feel good about him and, Honestly, you can always tell like when a guy starts moving up the depth chart at all as a freshman or as a early guy or whatever, it's it's notable. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he was working with the second team, which like as a true freshman in the spring, that's as high as you can possibly get, unless mm-hmm. you're just like a special like five star NFL first round type of dude. Um, and I'm not saying CJ Brown can't be that, but I just think like he's done about as much as you can do in your first month on campus. He's not perfect. He's made some mistakes. He's dropped some passes. He had a fumble in one of those pa- in one of those uh, early yeah. practices. Uh, but for the most part, he flashes as consistently as any of these guys. I mean, we were talking about some of the receive the young receivers like a Davion Dozier and Dasmond James, who haven't exactly taken that step forward. C.J. Brown has kind of passed them up, at least in my eyes. Agreed. And I think in the yeah. coaching staff's eyes, because he's getting a little bit more opportunities. Um, so who knows? Maybe I don't know if he's going to be starting or anything. Mostly just because Isaiah Satania is really good, and he's going to be in that slot there. Sure. Uh, and once they get some of their older receivers back, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But C.J. Brown is a dude that I think they like a lot, and uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm op- optimistic a little bit about what he could do. Yeah, for sure. And it kind of goes to to his follow up question there on on thoughts on the wide receiver core. I know it kind of sounds crazy because it wasn't great last year and they essentially ran it back and then have added yeah. a couple young guys and a, and a track guy. Uh, I think it's going to be a strength for this team. And the reason why is because Andrew Armstrong is just a flat that is out a strength dude. for the team. That is a, that is a strength. He yeah. is a strength. <laughs> Armstrong is incredible and it's just hard to deny how much better Broden has become. Like yeah. he's uh I mean, he's gotten bigger and stronger. We know how fast he is, and he's got that size. Confidence, um, too, I feel like is a big thing yes, for him. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And you got two guys like that, and then you're mixing in uh, Satania, who might finally be used appropriately, what you have at, at the tight end positions. So that's not wide receiver, but you got a lot yeah. of weapons there, man. And uh, I think I think that it could be a, a, a pretty damn good offense if those guys are all clicking. So Yeah, you know, like guys like Jaden Wilson and Isaac Tesla. You know, yeah, they're not going to. I didn't mention either one of them. No, yeah, yeah you like, know, what I mean? but it's like they're not like blow you away guys. But if they were your one and two, you'd be like, man, we need something. But they're like potentially your fourth, fifth options, maybe even six if CJ Brown really keeps cooking. Yeah, not a bad problem yeah, to have. Not a bad yeah. one at all. I mean, like Tesla got the start today because they had a couple guys out, but it's like 
you know, if he's your go-to guy, it's probably concerning. But yeah, he's number five on this team. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned the track guy, Jordan Anthony, who, frankly, I have, he's been struggling in practice. Like, I'll just yeah. go ahead and say. We know he's got feet, but I remember did A&M he have fans <laughs> saying that he dropped a lot of passes, mm-hmm. but he hadn't played. So you're kind of like, how do they know that? In practice, he's dropped like six or seven in the few that we've seen him at. Uh, clearly very fast, obviously runs track. Uh, not a super big guy, so I was like, I kind of was starting to write him off a little bit. He started to flash a little bit today. He made a few yeah. nice little receptions, working with the second team offense a little bit. Yeah, he did. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be like a starter for this team or really make a big splash or anything, but you just go on down the line. I mean, we're talking about some of their six, seven, and eight guys, and then there's still room like Davion Dozier, who had a really rough day today. A, mm-hmm. a bad as as rough of a day you can have, I would say, uh, considering he's only he was targeted three times and he dropped all three targets. That's tough. But, I mean, you're talking about him and Dasmond James still as guys who you're not asking anything out of them. Like, they're, they're, yeah, they might not even travel, but if they do splash, it's cool. It's like just adds to the fold. Uh, I think I, I like what they have with some of those middle options, like through the four through seven range. I think a lot of those guys are boom or bust, and they can be that way because you have some bona fide dudes at the top, like you mentioned. For sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um Let's see. We've gone for about 45 minutes here. Baseball starts in an hour. <laughs> yeah. I and, kinda, it's kind of weird that we're going live <laughs> right before a baseball game. But yeah. yeah, I know. Well, we definitely wanted to make sure that we got it in. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that you get out to Bomb Walker in plenty of time. Um, <laughs> any any final thoughts that you would like to uh, to impart on this, this riveting crowd that we've got going on? Thoughts on QB2? Malachi Singleton. That's who it is. We gave some thoughts, uh, Caleb. Whenever we finish this, you can. I don't know. If, I don't know how it works with live. Can you go back now? Can he yeah, go back now? Yeah, and it'll be like it'll be on YouTube and yeah. stuff too, and and we'll have it out in podcast form a little bit later. Check on that for a more in depth analysis. Yeah. But no, Singleton. We did talk about that a good bit, but we think Singleton has kind of emerged as the uh, as the QB two yeah, at this point. And KJ Jackson is the future. And KJ Jackson, and I love Green's KJ the Jackson, starter, man. And then you can do the math from there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Jay Wright, we just got a JR, J, Jarius Wright drop from JR Shelton. He and Chris Gregg were there in attendance today, just That's hanging right. out. I'll, I'll be honest, I mistook Jarius Wright for Simeon Blair. <laughs> If you weren't going to say it, I was. He was. Now, to be fair, we were like 30 <laughs> feet away from him, and I was like, dude, is that Simeon Blair? <laughs> and Scotty goes, brother, that's Jerry's right. <laughs> I was like, you know There's what? I know it's Chris Gregg, nowadays. though, because he was in our studio the other day. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Chris Gregg <laughs> did look bigger today. He did, yeah. yeah. When he He's not one of those here. players. You know, some of the former football players lose so much weight when they're done playing. Right. He he looked a little little small the other day. I was, You know, you were surprised by how small he was, but he looked big today. Yeah, he did. He did. He still beat me up. I, there's no doubt in my mind no, about well, that. No, I mean, so that wasn't in question. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean I, you know. I just, <laughs> Kingsley, we love you, by the way. Yes, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, no, we definitely appreciate everybody who, uh, especially those of you who tuned in live on a yeah on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, afternoon before a, uh, a Razorback sweep out at Bomb Walker. Exactly. So um, get out there and, and check that out for sure. And um, let's see, what do we got? I guess it's probably the same schedule next week. I don't know. I haven't looked, but I'm guessing it's probably a Tuesday-Thursday practice thing. and. Yeah, I think so. We'll play, yeah. and we'll go live one of those days. Not sure, hundred percent, but I mean, yeah, we'll keep this rolling. Yeah, and we'll, f- uh, we'll figure it out. But yeah, make sure uh, make sure you keep an eye on on, a, on in the next pot of that nature. I'm sure we're gonna have a, a banger of a bombastic podcast that's coming out after the Razorbacks complete this sweep. Yeah, um, you should probably go back and listen to yesterday's pot at the Palace. That was a good one, uh, Decent, with, notable one with the portal pop, the uh, the commitment of Josh Cohen, and then we talked about what might be coming next. So, a lot of things you guys can check out, and a lot of things coming on deck. Natty State Sports for Andrew Ellis. This has been Curtis Wilgerson. Really appreciate you guys tuning in as always, and we will catch you next time.